Hello everybody and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. This week I'll be demonstrating this wistful sunset scene across a simple and beautiful wetlands using watercolour. For this painting today I'll be working on a quarter imperial size paper or 28 by 38 centimetres. This is cold pressed watercolour paper uh, brand Saunders Waterford weight uh, 300 GSM. It's a lovely good all rounder for watercolour. The colours I'm using today are on screen at the moment. I'll pop a full list of everything I'm using in the uh, description of the video as per usual. Uh, but to start with today, the first step is to paint in our sky, which I want to do wet in wet. So I'm thoroughly wetting the top two thirds of the paper using my large two inch flat brush. Now I've let that water sink into the paper for a couple of minutes so that it's really nice and sewed through. Uh, and I'm beginning with some raw sienna and some burnt sienna for a really nice bright golden looking sunset. For this first uh, wet in wet wash I'm using an Estoda Ultimo synthetic mop brush in size 14 which is a really really great brush to cover these large areas and get some really nice sort of soft diffused marks. And as you can see I'm just sort of blending the two colours together here uh, and pulling a little bit of it up further into the sky. I don't want to cover too much ground here because uh, as you can see I want to start adding in my blue tones around this beautiful sunset. Um, I've always loved sunsets where you can sort of see the blue sort of glimmering along the top part of the sky uh, as the fiery sun sinks down below and you get this wonderful blending of blue into the yellow and orange which of course um, <laughs> is not always the easiest thing to do with watercolour because of course as we know blue and yellow tend to go together to make green on the paper so uh, the challenge here is uh, placing those colours next to each other but not blending them too much on the paper uh, so we don't get that mixture happening and we don't get a, uh, a nice vibrant green sky, not quite what we're after. So to avoid getting uh, unwanted greens in my sunsets what I tend to do as you can see here is place my blues alongside the warmer sunset colours but not blend the edges. Uh, I try and avoid taking my brush over that edge between the blue and the yellow and the orange because uh, otherwise then it can really start to blend together and get quite greenish but uh, I just rely on the water and the paint sort of um, softening together on this lovely cotton watercolour paper and creating a soft edge without me having to go in and do any heavy blending with the brush. So now whilst that sky is still wet uh, I'm coming in now with a smaller brush and I'm just going to quickly put in a really nice sort of loose dark distant tree line along this horizon line. I'm just using um, a small round brush to do this, nothing too fancy, and some uh, burnt umber paint. And all I'm doing is just following along the um, horizon line, filling in some dark patches, pulling up some loose shapes into the potential shapes of uh, sort of trees or shrubs or bushes and that sort of thing that you might see. Uh, sort of popping up along the uh, horizon line of a uh, of a wetlands or piece of countryside. It's important to not do it all the sort of same height. You can see I'm leaving some parts quite sort of low and flat just with um, a little bit of the burnt umber coming along here in this middle section, uh, keeping that quite low to the ground but then pulling up some um, taller strokes of the brush uh, to create some distant trees as well. And this is, um, this is great fun to do just because it is such a simple thing to do. You just pop your paint in in the uh, simplest sort of lines and dots and dashes and then the water does the rest of the magic. Uh, you can see already that I'm getting these lovely soft blended edges from where I'm putting in this burnt umber paint and it's diffusing into that orange sky and really softening all the outlines. They already look, to my mind at least, like a hazy distant trees on the horizon. And now I've got those main shapes in, I'm just emphasising them here with a darker colour. So I'm using neutral tint here which you can see is going on really nice and dark and it's just emphasising 
those uh, tree lines and those shapes which of course would be quite stark and silhouetted against that sinking sun behind them which is why I'm really going in here with this dark colour. Um, if you don't have neutral tint or if you prefer a uh, something like a lamp black would work here really well uh, as well or possibly um, a Payne's grey. Now here you can see I'm just putting in some clouds uh, trying to work quite quickly here whilst this uh, sky is still nice and wet you can see it is drying out a little my paint isn't sort of going in and diffusing quite as much but it's still wet enough to do these really nice soft edged clouds um, as long as I work quickly so for this cloud colour I'm using some white gouache for that sort of soft cloudy opacity and I mixed in a little bit of ultramarine blue and some neutral tint as well just to get this really nice sort of soft delicate grey colour I don't want too much of a heavy cloud coverage this isn't sort of a dramatic stormy sky this time rather these lovely sort of soft drift of clouds towards evening sort of almost in a romantic way um, and I'm doing a couple of different patterns here you can see I'm just dabbing with my uh, round brush to just bring these sort of soft almost mackerel clouds coming across diagonally across the painting which I think adds a really nice simple bit of interest into the sky as well as these uh, smaller sort of straight lined clouds the ones coming directly across and just sort of drifting across the painting sort of sinking lower and lower towards the horizon. You can see I'm just uh, using the tip of my brush to put in these sort of long horizontal clouds. I'm holding the brush quite high up on the handle and sweeping it loosely across to get that, uh, that horizontal shape and just sort of studding them along the sky trying to get a really natural sort of appearance. Um, of course if you do prefer your clouds to be a little darker, a little bit more dramatic, simply add a bit more colour into your uh, mixture. Um, a bit more ultra ultramarine and a bit more neutral tint or some Payne's grey or something will really darken those up um, really nicely. But one of the reasons I'm leaving these quite so pale is that I want to paint a beautiful flight of geese in silhouette um, across this lovely sky um, and I don't want the clouds to be very dark and to uh, detract from that. So that's why we've got these lovely soft, uh, soft grey clouds coming across the sky here. So now I'm really happy with how that sky is looking so far. So I'm just going to let it rest and dry naturally whilst I work on the lower section. While I've still got all this lovely paint nice and wet on my palette, I'm doing a bit of dry brushing and this is going to be the water in our wetland scene. Uh, so I'm dry brushing the top, the top of that lower third, if that makes sense, with um, the, my sunset colours. We've got the uh, burnt sienna and the raw sienna. Uh, going across that section there and now I'm just about to put in along this um, the very bottom of the painting another little bit of dry brush but we are coming in with the blue colours this time as I want to get the uh, impression of the reflected sky in the water so I'm just loosely pulling my brush across and uh, introducing some more ultramarine a bit of cerulean but I think that is mostly ultramarine there uh, into this lower third of the painting trying to make some sort of loose interesting marks keeping lots and lots of that white paper sort of peeking through these raggedy dry brush marks because that's going to give us that sparkle on the surface of the water really simply it's just going to help bring everything together once I put uh, the rest of the detail into this foreground so I know it looks um, a bit messy right now but don't worry uh, it's uh, all going to come together and this is a really nice simple way of loosely adding um, some land into your foreground if you're doing a, a wetlands or a marshland or a pond or something like this with a ragged edge um, I'm using the flat of a long brush uh, filled with plenty of paint and water and just going along and loosely dabbing it and tapping it essentially against my paper to get these um, interesting different marks and you can see here you can it doubles up as well because you can use the point to just get that to get those narrow thin lines across the horizon line there. This is my size large uh, sword liner brush that I'm using um, but any decently large brush would work 
for this technique. This is just a brush I feel really comfortable using and handling and that I've had a lot of practice with so I know that it's going to work for me. So that's my recommendation is just you try out whatever brushes you like, your favourite ones and figure out what works for you. Um, but as you can see I'm able to put in this sort of land coming up from the right side here. Um, I'm using burnt umber for this as well, uh, mixed with a tiny bit of neutral tint to uh, start darkening it down here and just getting in those sort of basic rough, sort of quite rugged shapes of these little bits of land popping up out of the water here. And now here with my small brush I'm just adding in a little of the grey colour that I used for the cloud. Uh, just because I thought it might be nice to get a little hint of this sort of misty opacity into this uh, foreground here and in this uh, little background ridge. So you can see I'm just dotting in the colour, wet and wet, and just letting it diffuse along these lines of uh, burnt umber. So now I've let that dry fully before beginning the next step. This is what the painting looks like now that it's dry. You can see we've got these lovely soft diffused marks in the sky where we've let it dry naturally uh, and I can now focus on uh, adding a bit more detail into that foreground and the first thing I'm going to do for that is to add some loose shadows around the base of these little spits of land that I've put in using some neutral tint. Again, I'm using neutral tint here, but really any dark colour will do. You just want something that's dark enough to uh, throw a shadow basically underneath these little uh, raggedy spits of land that we've got popping up from uh, out of the water here. This just really helps to emphasise that this is a bit of land popping up out of the water, not just random sort of scruffy marks. Uh, it just helps to add that little bit of depth as well because of course these aren't very tall bits of land, they're not sort of big hills or cliffs or anything so they're not going to throw a vast shadow or reflection but just this little extra touch helps them to stand out and look a little bit more natural in the painting. But you can see how loosely I'm doing these shadows. I'm using my small sword line of brush now but you can use any brush really anything that comes to a decent point or even a flat brush would serve you really well here as well uh, and you just need to drag the darker colour roughly along the underside of these little raggedy uh, marks that we've made with the burnt umber. And here you can see I'm using the neutral tint as well to just uh, add a little extra sort of bits here and there, little extra details into the land that we've already created and just pull a little bit more dark um, across this uh, middle section here. So again, just leave that section to dry before you start the next one just to avoid any unwanted smudges. Um, but now I'm going to be adding a lovely bank of reeds and rushes across the foreground of this painting. And I'm using a mixture of burnt umber again mixed with the neutral tint to really darken it down quite considerably. And the reason I'm doing that is because we have of course our lovely sunset in the background which is going to be throwing a low light across the water towards us. So a lot of these things are going to be in silhouette uh, which is why I'm using this very dark paint to uh, basically do now all of these reed details. Um, I'm not worrying about sort of putting them in yellows and greens and the more natural normal colours because naturally we would see these in silhouette with this low light coming towards us in the foreground. So my focus here was on creating these sort of tall, uh, really strong and dramatic shapes in the foreground here rather than worrying about colour. I just really wanted these lovely bold uh, silhouettes to really fill this foreground up. Uh, but also to be sort of quite nice and loose and ragged and sort of, you know, remain in keeping with the rest of the painting. Which is one of the reasons I use this uh, colour combination as well, the burnt umber with the neutral tint, just to echo what I've got already in the foreground uh, and along that horizon. And this is uh, the simplest way, in my opinion, to put in details like this. Uh, especially as I'm right-handed so I tend to work from left to right across the paper which means I'm not worrying about moving across wet paint and smudging it and just putting in these lovely long loose lines and really just enjoying the process uh, not worrying too much about being too quick 
uh, but still of course you want to maintain that lovely looseness to tie into the rest of the painting. And of course, as you see here, you want to put your taller plants uh, in the foreground and your uh, shorter ones in the background, again, to maintain that impression of distance, maintain the foreground, maintain the background. So you can see these ones I'm just working on here, I've made particularly um, tall and statuesque looking. And because this is a loose watercolour painting, I'm not worrying too much about um, botanical accuracy here. I am just painting what I'm enjoying, uh, doing these fun lines and fun leaves and just painting what looks beautiful to me. Uh, having said that, um, what I did also decide to do was to turn some of these sort of lovely tall statuesque reeds into one of my favourite plants, which is uh, the bulrush. Uh, are known as bulrushes here in the UK and I believe uh, cattails in the US. Those very sort of dramatically shaped uh, riverside plants, very um, eminently noticeable with that sort of large sturdy sort of uh, top with a little spike coming out. Uh, so I decided to go along and as I was adding some more leaves and details into the, um, the plants on this side, and you can see an extra little bit of shadow around the roots of them there, very simply, just with the, uh, the neutral tint and the sword liner. I decided to adjust the shape of some of my plants to uh, encompass that as well. So you can see here, it's quite easily done just adjusting that reed that's already quite wide, and this one here, and just giving it that sort of simple but classic silhouette. So you can see I'm simply using the uh, pointed tip of my sword liner brush to um, just adjust these shapes and just fill in these smaller details. Um, but of course you could use a round brush or a flat brush would probably be um, a little bit easier to do this here as well. This is partly because the sword liner brush is very springy and can sometimes be um, a little difficult to control to do uh, this sort of detailed work. But there we go, there's one more added uh, to the painting. And basically just keep going until you're happy with the composition. You can see I've gone along here just off camera because you don't want to see me doing the same thing a thousand times and just added a bunch more reeds and these lovely cattails uh, along the right hand side of the painting and all I'm doing now is using a little bit more white gouache to add some uh, sort of highlights and echoes of these shapes uh, along where the lines are particularly dark. This is just to help to bring that foreground out a little bit because it did all get really rather dark here. Um, which is obviously correct in terms of being these lovely dramatic silhouetted plants, but I think just this little touch of white gouache, a little touch of highlight just to help bring out the actual shapes and helps them to stand out um, against the, uh, the rest of the painting, against the, uh, the dry brush that we've got going on in the background. And again, just using the flat of the brush there to just bring a few more highlights into those dark areas around the roots too. So once again, I put that aside to fully dry before starting on this last step which is adding a handful of beautiful birds into this uh, lovely sunset sky. I think I uh, mentioned earlier that I always plan to put geese into this painting and uh, well, here they are. I'm going to paint a skein of geese flying, uh, flying homewards for the night to roost perhaps across this wetland somewhere that they'll be safe from nighttime predators. Um, and I'm going to paint them roughly following a classic sort of flying V formation. I'm using neutral tint, uh, basically not mixed with anything, just alone, which comes up as this very, very dark colour, almost black. Um, again, because 
the birds would be silhouetted against the setting sun, much in the same way that our reeds and rushes were. I wanted to do them really simply in a dark colour without worrying too much about detail because, of course, it wouldn't show too much. You would just see the shape of them if you were watching them fly, you know, in real life across this beautiful horizon. And as you can see, it's quite simple to put in this loose, simple um, silhouette here. What you want is uh, uh, sort of a straight line going across, which is going to be the, um, the long body and the neck. You want a couple of um, loose triangular shapes for the wings, pointing either upwards or downwards, depending on the, uh, the wing motion. But do make sure you vary your shapes. Um, to make sure you know you get varied wing placements for these birds because otherwise they can look a bit silly if they all look exactly the same. You can see here I've just added a few more off camera because they are a bit fiddly um, and we've got some with the wings pointing down and some with the wings pointing up. Because I'm not using a reference photo for this painting, this composition is coming uh, straight out of my own brain, so to speak. So um, the way that I'm adding these birds in is I'm sort of just doing them one at a time and then stepping back, looking at the painting, looking at the composition and seeing where another one needs to go to sort of help keep everything balanced. And one thing that I'm really enjoying here is uh, echoing this sort of stud of grey cloud we've got coming diagonally across the sky and echoing that with the motion of these geese coming upwards here in this sort of diagonal angular line from left to right uh, towards the top corner. So I'm re really, really happy with that. And now just adding to the uh, slight V shape, the flying V down here by uh, adding a few more geese just down coming into land perhaps towards the, uh, the bottom of this, uh, of this section of sky. And so at this point, um, all it comes down to really is uh, adding in as many or as few birds as you like. Keep going until you're happy with them, until you're happy with the composition and the overall sort of shape of your bird formation in the painting. Uh, and then at that point, that will be the uh, that will be the finished painting. And here we are. This is my finished painting. And I really enjoyed painting this one today, I'm really chuffed with how this one came out and so I do hope that you guys enjoyed watching it come together too. I really love that stud of geese dramatically across the sky, echoing that cloud shape and these lovely dramatic bulrushes in the foreground. Um, but I'd love to hear what you guys think. Uh, if you'd like to see more videos like this from me then please feel free to check out my Patreon page by following the link below. Um, but that's all from me this week. Uh, wherever you are, I hope you're having a wonderful week. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I wish you all good health and a very happy painting.